Welcome back everybody. So there is no doubt that VR can give users an incredibly immersive experience. And recent advances to panel technology have brought us insanely high resolutions. Now this sounds like a dream come true, but to get a graphics card to muster up the 2K per eye, so that's 4K, at high enough frame rates so that, uh, you know, you don't hurl, is pretty unachievable for most people. And in certain titles, it requires all the way up to a 3090 to hit those playable frame rates. Having said that, the experience that you can achieve with the current generation of headsets is leaps and bounds ahead of what we started out with. So recently I did a video on a completely wireless flight simulator chair that's down here. You can check that video out up here. And it got me thinking, does the immersion of VR make you a better pilot? Well, today we're gonna get you guys the answer to that question. Microsoft Flight Simulator offers up some pretty nifty landing challenges, and that's what we're gonna be using for our comparison today. To make this fair, my wife, who is actually standing behind the camera, is going to be randomly selecting one of these challenges when I switch from 2D and then back to VR. That way I don't get familiar with each challenge. Our metric for this comparison is going to be the points awarded for each of those landings. Now I'm gonna be graded on the accuracy of touchdown, the distance of the rollout, and the landing smoothness on each landing. That will give us a fair comparison between with the VR headset on and by using 2D, the higher score wins. Before we start, let's meet the contenders and the hardware behind it. So in this corner, we have the Acer 4K 2K XB280HK. It's a glorious 4K monitor running a cool 60 hertz and sporting absolutely nothing else. It will be good enough to tax the GPU to the same frame rate as our next contender, which is the HP Reverb G2. The Reverb G2 has a resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye, a 90 hertz refresh rate, and a field of view of 114 degrees. Now while the Quest 2 has been my daily driver for those quick games like Population 1 or Contractors, the G2 takes the cake in games like Microsoft Flight Simulator where every pixel counts. Because of that, the G2 is going to be representing our virtual world. Okay, so she is going to pick the first challenge here and we'll be doing this one in 2D and then moving on from there. So go ahead and just pick a random one for us. Oh, she picked the hardest one. It's Lukla in Nepal. Okay, well, that's a challenging first start, but all right, let's go for it. Wish me luck. While we load up the sim, let's go over the hardware powering this challenge. Inside the Lee & Lee Dynamic Razor case, we have an i9-9900K paired with a 2080Ti. There's 32 gigabytes of Trident Z 3200 megahertz RAM and a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo as a boot drive. For the flying side of the equation, we have the X55 Rhino Hotaz combined with the rudder pedals and flight panels from Logitech. All of this is piped into a seven port USB hub and then onto a Raspberry Pi that is running virtual here to connect these components wirelessly. All right, so we are all set up. I'm adjusted and ready to fly on the first challenge. And of course, it's it's Lukla. It's one of the hardest airports in the world to land at. So we're going to be doing a 2D version with my monitor here. And to level the playing field a little bit, in VR, you have sensors in here that sense your movement and pan the view along with it. So what we've done for the 2D version is add Track IR, which is uh, using these lights here combined with the camera up on top of the monitor to register my head movements and move the view accordingly. That way, the only difference between these is the immersion of VR. Everything else is the same. Now, looking back on this landing here, I can see that pretty much every time I did the 2D, I was way above where I was supposed to be on approach. And I noticed that was a common trend when using the tracker and the 4K screen. Now this landing wasn't too bad, but let's go ahead and see how it is with VR. All right, that was absolutely horrendous and I did terrible, but now it's time to switch over to VR. So go ahead and select another random one. Definitely not Lukla. <laughs> All right, that is going to be in Aspen. All right, that doesn't seem too bad, right? I'll give it a shot. Okay, I'm gonna restart this. Had a little bit of issue with the headset not turning on. 
Uh, but we are all set up now and ready to go with the HP Reverb G2. This was kind of the headset that the developers uh, from Asobo uh, planned on everybody using. It's, uh, it's what they tested everything with, it's what they developed it for. So this should be exactly what they wanted us to experience. Let's go ahead and see how it is. Man, it looks so good. You can see everything so clear with this headset. All right, there we go. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit as, uh, as we approach the runway here. Now, this one was pretty easy to line up and I did find it a lot easier to land with VR as I'll go over later on. Now, it is a little bit choppy because I was trying to record uh, while pushing out all those frames for VR. So my apologies for the choppiness. And you can see I was a little off on the, on the center line there, but not too bad. We'll just come to a stop so we can get our score and move on to the next challenge. Uh, I will say it is much easier in VR because you can look up, you can look around so much easier uh, with the, oh, let's take this off, <laughs> okay. With the, uh, with the Track IR, it's great. And it really helps to be able to move your head around and to look left and right, up and down at your switches and everything. But when it comes to pinpointing a runway or something off in the distance, the, the tracking system kind of gets lost once you reach a certain angle and you still have to move your eyes, you know, to stay centered on the monitor. Whereas wherever you look, your screen's right in front of you. So it, it really helps with, uh, with locating the runway, making sure you're set up for your final approach, everything. Um, we'll see if the tell a different story when I load that one up. We're gonna see if the scores tell a different story. Um, now we're going to switch back to 2D for the next challenge and then randomly select uh, alternating each challenge until we've accomplished one set of each. And just to be thorough, I might go back and do it one more time for each one once I get a feel for everything. That way you can get kind of an average of starting out and now once you're more familiar with it. And we'll see who wins in the end. Okay, so the numbers speak for themselves. It looks like, yes, VR will help you become a better pilot. Now, true, this monitor is not the greatest for this kind of test. Obviously, if you had uh, a monitor with more of a curve or a triple monitor setup, yes, that would be better and you would be able to see a lot more. But I still think that the vertical field of view is very important to have while you're flying. Being able to always just kind of glance down in the headset at your airspeed, as well as for your angle attack, is so much easier in a VR headset. It just gives you more awareness of your surroundings, and I find that really did help me land better. Of course, results may vary person to person. This is just my personal experience, but I think for the most part, yeah, VR definitely helped. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.